the hardship leaves and the leaves are in the hardship form. And this tree is found very common in our parts of the world because it's a tropical forest tree. It goes into a very big one. Here we have a bonza. But uh, it's only because we have it indoors. And normally this tree grows outside in the church and all good and strong. So this is a tree, as you know, that the Buddha chose uh, to sit under when he did enlightenment. Okay? You know, the Mahabodhi tree, uh, the Latin name is Ficus religiosia. Ficus is fig. It's a fig tree. Religiosia because it's a religious tree. You know? So this is a tree under which the Buddha gained enlightenment in Bodhigaya. So if you go on a pilgrimage, like some of the teachers from the ISS has followed me for a uh, for, uh, Pilgrimage, you will actually see this picture. This picture was actually, actually taken by me. Yeah? Uh, so this Bodhi tree was just behind the main shrine hall, and in between the Bodhi tree and the main shrine hall is uh, the Vajra seat, it's a diamond seat. Uh, that's about seven feet across, seven by four. And that was a place where the Buddha sat and gave a mountain man. Yeah? And uh, of course, because that special tree, special fig tree under which the Buddha sat, uh, where he did the night, but that is called the Bodhi tree. All the other trees of the same species are called people tree, P-I-P-E-L, people tree. But only one tree out of the millions of people tree, that is called the Bodhi tree. So not all the trees with the same archetype are called Bodhi tree. They are only called people tree because the, it was not linked to the Buddha. It's not linked to the Buddha, so they are not called Bodhi tree. They are actually people tree. Right? And um, so the Bodhi tree has descended from the original tree. And uh, but if you were to go to Bodhgaya now, the tree that is growing like this, this tree, this picture, is not the original tree because the original tree has uh, has been destroyed. Uh, one of the first people who destroyed the tree, it's a very strange story. You know, Emperor Ashoka was a very cruel king until he became a Buddhist, uh, after the war in Kalinga. And he has so much devotion for this tree because the tree represents the Buddha's enlightenment. So he pays a lot of uh, reverence to the tree. Now, Emperor Ashoka has many wives. Can you call them? Well, I mean, the, being an emperor is not many wives. One of the wives were jealous. Because he was paying so much respect to the tree. You know, I know women getting jealous of because the husband looked at, at some other women, but this is a wife that got jealous over a tree. So she got the tree cut down. The original tree cut down. So Emperor Ashoka was so disappointed with that that he made an aspiration and another tree grew in his place. Okay, so that was that was one of And of course uh, in India also uh, Buddhism was uh, sometimes being um, persecuted, so the tree was also destroyed by some other kings. But another tree grew from the same tree. Yeah? Uh, and then at one time, uh, a tree, this tree was being blown up by the wind. So if you go to Bukaya, the original tree, the tree that's growing there is not the original tree, but it, it comes from the same spot. Uh, but there are two, uh, there are some other trees. For instance, uh, there is uh, the Ananda Bodhi tree. If you go to Jetavana Grove, you go to Jetavana Grove, Ashwati, there is a Bodhi tree that was planted in Jetavana Grove during the Buddha's time. It was taken by Mogalana, the tree's miraculous power, he was able to get a branch of the tree and planted it in Shavasti. And Ananda was looking after the tree very well. So he had so much devotion over the tree that they call it Ananda Bodhi tree. So you go to the Jetavana Grove, you'll see the Ananda Bodhi tree there. And there is another tree. This is uh, at Anuradhapura. During the time of Emperor Ashoka, he sent his son, Mahinda, Arahant Mahinda, to bring Buddhism to Sri Lanka. So uh, Mahinda uh, converted the king. Uh, his name is Tisa, King Tisa. And his sister, Sangamita bought a sapling of the tree, yeah, of the Bodhi tree, and planted it in Anuradhapura. So if you go to Anuradhapura, you will see uh, a tree growing. It is uh, uh, the one that the uh, oldest tree with our recorded history. 
in Anuradha Pura. So if you see this tree under which the Buddha said is the original tree, uh, the sun is taken to Anuradha Pura and this is like a grand sun. So therefore this, this tree that you see here is an object of admiration. And you ask this tree, oh tree, how wonderful, how beautiful you look. But this tree is linked up with the Buddha. When the Buddha gained enlightenment, it is from this tree, this line of this tree that the Buddha gained enlightenment. That's why it's called an object of admiration. How fantastic, isn't it? Alright. Now, now, now let me just recall what happened during the, during the Buddha's enlightenment. Did you know that the Buddha went through this subject? Yes. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen, seen pictures of the Buddha in the he cut down his wool and then eventually he gets his skeleton. Is it, is it, if I touch my stomach, if I touch my stomach, I'm not caught. You know? and, if, and if you look into the eyes, it's like stars shining in the well. Right? So he keeps changing the knee and then, and he almost drowned in the river called Naranjara River. There's a, there's a big river, he was practicing near the river. And he was so weak that when he got into the river to bathe, he was almost swept over by the river. He almost drowned. And he managed to catch all of a branch. And then you see it. So then you realize that you can't gain enlightenment that way by uh, doing this uh, extreme self modification. So that is when he decided to take food. And do you remember who offered him the food? What's her name? Sujata, right? And Sujata offered him the milk rice, and he took the milk rice, and that milk rice actually nourished him. For his practice. So after receiving the big reference to Jata, the future Buddha, the Bodhisattva, spent one whole day along the bank of the Naranjara River. And then, as the sun was setting, he started walking towards the Bodhi tree in Urubella. Yeah, on the side of the road. Can you see the, uh, uh, the Mahabodhi temple there, standing up in the horizon? And on his way, uh, a grass cutter offered him eight bottles of kusha. Grass. It's also called Munja grass. Okay? And so this grass is very good for he used this as a mat. Alright, so uh, you also have a picture of the Munja grass here. I managed to capture this. And uh, the sandy bank was actually the river. During the winter, the water has gone down so much that it becomes a sandy bank. You can walk across it, uh, like walking across the desert like that. You feel like a camel walking through the desert. And the river is very shallow, so you can just walk across. That was in the winter. In, uh, during the rainy season, it's a big river. Okay? And uh, this uh, uh, grass, uh, uh, the Bodhi Shakai, put it under the tree, Bodhi tree, Bodhi tree. He found the Bodhi tree, which is a very, very good spot to the tree there. And, and as he sat, sat on the Bodhi grass, he made the determination. Because, because there, there is a feeling that, that he, he feels that he's going to be in the So when, so when you have the feeling, oh, something great is going to happen. That is when he made the determination. He says, even as the streams of rivers were dry with the wind, and it's true that Narayana also gets dry with the wind. Why should not the blood in my veins dry up? He says he will sit there and will not get up. Even if the blood in his veins will dry up, he will remain sitting under the curtain to gain enlightenment. Of course, when you do meditation, you don't make this promise. <laughs> You don't make a promise, I'll sit and I'll get enlightenment. I don't think enlightenment is so easy. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas the Buddha, to me, he knew that he was about to be enlightened. So he made a promise that even the river will dry up with the wind. Let the blood in my veins dry up. I will sit here until I get enlightenment. So that's the determination. Then what happened? So when he sat under the Bodhi tree, you know, as a, the moon, this is a full moon of the month of Vishakta, right? Can you imagine? And the forest, you were sitting under the Bodhi tree, and there was this mat of grass, the Munja grass, and you were sitting on. He made the determination, and his mind went into meditation. The technique that he actually discovered when he was seven years old at the Plant Festival. So he started watching his breath, his mind becomes very quiet and silent. He goes deeper and deeper into meditation. So about to move into the Japanese grid. And at that time, our good friend, Mara. Of course, Mara doesn't want anybody 
to gain enlightenment. Mara has been around all the time to pull you back and uh, so that you get uh, caught up in samsara. So Mara knew, oh, something is great going to happen. Oh, oh. So let me just stop the Bodhisattva from being enlightened. So he came to the Bodhisattva and the Bodhisattva's mind was so fine. And oh, oh, look at you, look at you, Gautama. Look at you. You're almost dead. See. You are so frail. You are just about to die. And you think you can get enlightenment? Oh, come on. Come on. Give up. Give up. Get up. Get up. Why don't you go back to your kingdom? Become a king. That way you can get a lot of good merits. And then the, what happened? He created a vision for the, for the Bodhisattva. This is, this is, can you see? Kapila the Vastu, your kingdom, is being, being crushed. crushed. The Sakyans are being killed. Why, why don't you go home and do something about it? Why, why do you stick under the tree? Go back, go back home. home. Save, save your people. So that, so that was a vision created by Mara. And uh, when, when they didn't move, the Buddha saw the Sattva. He said, oh, I, I promise you, I promise you that you have power over all the world. You have unlimited power. Come on, come on. Get up, get up. Go back to your kingdom and become a king. So, so what, what happens? happens? The future Buddha says that though other cannot conquer your army, Mara, I will. I wear Munja grass, the symbol of a fighter. So the Munja grass that he's sitting is what fighters who put in their turban. That means when they put in their turban, they never retreat from a battle. They fight to the end. That is the Munja grass uh, significance. It's better for me to die in the battlefield than to live in defeat. That's how he told uh, the uh, Mara. Okay? So that the first part, the temptation, the promise of power, all that didn't work uh, for Mara. So Mara tried another trick. So he started coming with his army with a ton of balls, very frightening weapons, and you know you can imagine you know, all the uh, all the uh, Things that come from your figment of imagination, uh, the army came to attack the Buddha. But the Buddhas uh, transformed the arrows, uh, the arrows that which we shot by Mara with loving kindness. So that is how you transform anger with love, with kindness. And the Bodhisattva was very quiet, very mindful, and bringing his love and kindness transformed um, the uh, the weapons, the fire, the army of Mara. So Mara was powerless, uh, could not resist. And he said, Doctor, then Mara says, hey, Doctor, you are sitting on my throne. Get up, get up, get up, or I'll tear your heart apart. So that's a Mara. <laughs> he said, You're sitting on my throne. Get up. And the future Buddha said, Mara, you shall not drag me from my position. With wisdom, I will vanquish. The army of yours. Alright, so there was something that was going on between the, the Bodhisattva and Mara. And at that time, um, actually the Buddha felt that he has said that he has done enough merits. He doesn't need any more merits. What he needs is to give liberation. So the Buddha says that this throne is mine and earth is my witness. Because Mara says there's nobody to say that you have attained all the six. Who is that? The Buddha says, this throne is mine, and the earth is my witness. The earth has seen all the deeds that I have performed. And then, the Buddha touched the earth. The earth has a witness, and a huge town burst in the sky with an underbolt, and Mara's army will complete this category. And this is what you call the hand mudra in the famous Buddha statue called calling the earth the witness. And sometimes, in some Buddhist stories, they also saw uh, they got uh, the earth 